Hi, class. Welcome to module eight. More than that, this is module eight, lesson one. Well, let's do an overview and briefly talk about objectives, and then I will do a short lecture on the Wilcoxon sign test. In module seven, we learned hypothesis testing. We calculated p-values under a null hypothesis. Quite often, we had some very strong assumptions about having a random sample from a normal distribution. In this module, we focus on what's called non-parametric tests, of, wh of which the Wilcoxon sign test is the first we will learn. Our objectives this lesson are to conduct the Wilcoxon sign test, learn the concepts of parametric versus non-parametric tests, and asthmatotic versus exact tests. We will also program a permutation test version of the Wilcoxon sign test. All right, and now for our short lecture. As I mentioned last module, hypothesis testing. This is so much fun. We used a p-value to quantify the evidence. The p-values were calculated under a null hypothesis using a parametric probability model. As an example, we had a two-sample paired t-test. So in this setup, we have x1 through xn, random sample from the normal distribution, mean mu x, standard deviation sigma sub x, and then y1 through yn. For the paired, it was important that these are both size n, but y1 through yn, random sample from another normal distribution, some mean mu y, standard deviation sigma sub y. For our null hypothesis, we tested this mu sub d equals zero versus, at least in the two-sided case, mu sub d is not equal to zero, where we looked at these pairwise differences, d sub one, d sub two, out to d sub n. The di's follow a normal distribution. And then the paired t-test came from the fact that under the null hypothesis, this this is the sample average of the d's minus zero divided by s over the square root of n, s being the sample standard deviation. Well, is distributed as a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. This was a parametric test really due to this normality assumption. Now, as I mentioned, this whole module is non-parametric testing. We have a non-parametric analog of the two sample t-test and it is called the Wilcoxon sign test. It is also paired. In this test we do not make the normality assumption. Because of this H0 and HA, the null and our alternative hypothesis, do not involve the mean mu sub d. Okay well in this test we assume the pairwise differences d1 through dn form a random sample from a common distribution. However, this common distribution may not be normal. The null hypothesis, okay, is that m sub d is zero. The alternative hypothesis, at least for the two-sided case, is that m sub d is not equal to zero. And this is an important note here. Here, m sub d, this is the median. We let capital W be the number of pairs for which d sub i is greater than zero. What does that mean? Well, remember we are in the paired situation. So we have say x1 comma y1. There's one pair. We have say x2 comma y2. There's another pair. And then we have xn out to yn. There's our nth paired. And d sub i we take xi minus yi. So this is either positive, negative, or zero. And so capital W is the number of i such that d sub i is positive. You notice that this number is between zero and n. 
this capital W. Maybe I should write this, that zero is less than or equal to W is less than or equal to N. Now, my other note I have written, that this null hypothesis that the median of the Ds equals zero is equivalent to saying the following, the probability, I will highlight this, that X minus Y is positive equals 0.5. And so we can use the binomial test for the proportion of pairs with positive differences. And that just means that Xi minus Yi is greater than zero. This is called the Wilcoxon sign test. It tests if the proportion of positive signs, that's why we see this here, is one half for pairwise differences. Now, it's important to understand that non-parametric does not mean no assumptions. That's a common mistake. So this is not the case. Non-parametric does not mean no assumptions. We still have assumptions, and most importantly, that you have a random sample. That is, observations are independent and identically distributed. However, a non-parametric test has fewer assumptions, in particular the normality assumption, and is typically safer to use. The terminology here is called a robust test, since it is valid for non-normal data. Uh, the robust is, it's robust to the normality assumption. Now, ex exact tests versus asymptotic tests, that's something we talked about in the last module. Recall, an asymptotic test is based on the asymptotic approximated distribution of the test statistic. For example, if we do not have a normality assumption, sample mean is asymptotically normally distributed using central limit theorem. So the z-test and the t-test are asymptotically correct. An exact test is based on an exact distribution of the test st statistic. And one thing we talked about in the last module, the binomial test is an exact test. Okay, so you see this Wilcoxon sign test, which really is a binomial test is an exact test. Well, this is a wonderful question. Is the t-test parametric or non-parametric? Uh, <laughs> given, back up to, I started talking about the t-test as a recollection of the last module, and I mentioned the t-test was parametric. You should answer yes, but that is not the only answer. So, in module seven, we actually had two justifications for the t-test. And the first is very much like the very first page of our notes. We have d1 through dn from some normal distribution, mean mu, standard deviation sigma. And then we have this exact distribution here. Therefore, the t-test is an exact parametric test. Okay, we can highlight this. On the other hand, there was another justification for the t-test that was using the central limit theorem. So we can use the t-test even when we do not have normal data provided the sample size is large enough. And that is discussed here. So now D1 through Dn is a random sample from any distribution with large enough sample size. This, you take the sample mean minus mu divided by S over the square root of n approximately follows this t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. In this derivation, there are no parametric assumptions made, meaning we did not assume we had um, a random sample from the normal distribution. Therefore, the t-test is also an asymptotic non-parametric test. In contrast, the Wilcoxon sign test is exact and non-parametric because this random variable w, which is the number of pairs such that you have a positive pairwise difference, 
This follows a binomial distribution. Now, some remarks, since nonparametric tests make fewer assumptions, the safer choice is a nonparametric test. The issue, though, is that nonparametric tests can be more computationally intensive. When the sample size is small, the nonparametric exact tests are what's preferred. We would not be able to use a asymptotic nonparametric test if n is too small. Now, I'm just going to briefly mention the idea behind a permutation test. And in our Canvas pages, you can really um, learn about it more and do some coding. So the Wilcoxon sign test is one example of what's called a permutation test. Generally, the permutation tests are a type of Monte Carlo procedure that is very useful, that are very useful for statistical inference. What I'd like to do is close with a summary of the permutation tests, and then you can work through some R commands built into Canvas to really practice them and realize that the Wilcoxon sign test is a permutation test. Okay, so the permutation tests have two main steps. First of all, you create permuted or rearranged or shuffled data sets using symmetry under the null hypothesis. Then for each permuted or shuffled or rearranged, however you want to say it, for each permuted data set, you calculate the test statistic. So all of these together create a null distribution for your test statistic. That is what this is saying. Then we use this null distribution and get a p-value for the test statistic you observe. So in step one, you can iterate through all possible permutations provided the total number is small. You can see I put very rare because usually the number of permutations is enormous. So typically the total number of permutations is huge. And so you could select uh, 2,000 random permutations. That would suffice for testing purposes this would result in a randomized test. So these permutation tests are a standard method to create non-parametric procedures, similar to the bootstrap procedures we covered in a different module. Thank you so much, class. You can move forward in Canvas and practice some R commands.